on, take some stuff off it as I get her ready to go. So, I'm not going to take the solar panel off rig yet, but we had a nor'easter come through, so there's leaves everywhere, so, um, but I did get new, new bunk boards, I want to reposition my bunk boards, so, keel comes on a little bit better, so, I don't know, I was hoping to put it back in the water to get it readjusted, because we took it off, see, she's way over to the, uh, port side, so, a starboard of me. So, I, I'm going to reset this one, and, uh, and maybe we're still going to put it in, but the water's really cold. I just took out my boy's boat the other day, and the water's really cold, so, but, um, I think I showed you repair, so with everything going on, with the hole I put in the boat, putting in the water tank, um, I was hoping to put the boat back in. There's the patch. Um, hoping you can see that. Now I can't see that picture. So, I want to put the boat in patch it. So, I might want to do is just take everything out of the boat and do what I did before. Fill it up with water and see if the water stays in the boat. But, I don't know. I really didn't want to do that. So, but I don't. She's not going back in. So, that's a lesson. Don't drill a hole in your boat. Just between work and getting busy. When I finally patched it, it never went back in. Just the way it was. And, the fall, things were busy. So, I lost a lot of season this year upgrading my boat, messing it up. So, I won't make that mistake again, I'll tell you that much. So, but, but the, the outboard stayed nice and clean. It doesn't even look like it, it was even in the water this year. That's how clean it is. Hello, I'm back in my boat. My boat is back on the trailer in the driveway. Um, I think I took a video because we put the boat in and the boat was t realized it was taking on water. Wasn't sure if the water, it was water that was in the boat over the winter. And when I put the trailer, it ran back. But it seemed like a lot, so I kept it in for a few days, and I got concerned, so we took it out. I checked the keel. There were two options. I pretty much figured either the water was in back in the sump and collected, froze over the winter, and made like a fracture in the, in the fiberglass that was slight. The other option I was thinking about when I put in my water tank... I have the boards around the edges. I was afraid in the center, I have about two inches underneath the cockpit, so, I mean, the, the cabin floor, and on the edge, I guess I thought I had over an inch, and a couple places, it's actually a lot closer, so I was concerned that maybe that was one thing that I had done, is drilled holes through there. So when we pulled the boat the first time, I went under there, took the tank, water tank out, and I realized I had to flip the tank because I had all the inlets and outlets on the back, and I don't realize it really does pitch up, so I could never get the last two gallons of water out. So I had to spin the tank anyway. So I took that out. I checked the screws. They looked like they were close to the bottom of the hull, but none looked like they were in contact. But I decided I backed them all out to be safe, got out my bolt cup uh, cutters, and, you know, clipped them all about, you know, like eighth of an inch, took the point off, so not quite a quarter, but I'm going to say around eighth of an inch. Put them all back in. I couldn't see cracks, so I was thinking maybe this water was in the boat. We launched it. Well, the next day I came in here, and if you look here, there was a, about that much water the next day after our, we day sailed the next day in the boat. So, obviously, the boat was sinking. So, I decided we pumped it out. Water was still coming in, but not coming in that bad. We pumped it out that that night again, late, and then the morning again. There was water down in in the compartment and in the sump, but there was no water in the cabin floor. So it was coming in, but it wasn't coming in that fast. But the boat has to come out of the water to figure it out. So got it out of the water. It's been out for like a day now. I got my boat, my boy's boat, in the other day. So uh, we messed around that with today, and I had a fan in here running trying to air it all out a little bit and then I realized you know well, salt water got up into here here and even a little bit into here when it really flooded so I'm like I want to get that salt water out so I decided you know I'm just going to hose everything out and up in here there was water so I'm like let me hose all this out and then I was realizing hey you know how about I just sink the boat on the trailer maybe that'll show me where the hole is so I decided after hosing it all out I'm going to fill the boat up with water in here 
So, I didn't get much water in, I know there was some water in this cup, you know, a compartment, and I filled these all up, and it was running back to the sole. I had a little bit of, probably about water up to here, so all underneath, this was filled already. And I went underneath, outside, and looking, and finally I started hearing the drip. And over on this side, I got the paint scraper out, because I was trying to look for cracks, uh, you know, like stress cracks. And I scraped, and because I, I could see the drip, I scrape it, put the end in there, and pretty much, it looks like a screw hole. So I'm almost guaranteeing that one of these screws that's on the uh, starboard side must have went through. So um, in the process of, uh, I'm going to pull the water tank, which I'm doing tonight. I'm going to towel it, dry everything out as much as I can, and I'll get the fan in here running. Because I have some work i got to get done in my office. Um, this week, but I figure if I get this set up, it's Sunday, the 29th of July, I can get in here, um, and get her drying out, so I can get in here do, I've got the fiberglass, I've got the epoxy, get in here, sand the interior, I'll do a patch from the inside, and then I'll go outside, I'll scrape the paint off, and I'll sand down to the barrier coat, and I'll do a, um, uh, a patch from the outside also, so right now, that looks like it's the only hole that I can see. And obviously more water came in the second time because I backed all the screws out, cut them off. Originally the screw was in the hole, I guess, a little bit. So only a little bit of water was able to seep in. Once I cut the screw off, obviously the hole got bigger. More water was, supposed to, was able to come in. Lesson learned, make sure you measure before you're doing anything inside. Don't assume that you have clearance. Like I have clips here that were from the, the, uh, the battery that was originally mounted in this area. Those two screws are off also very close on the inside where the hole is. So, uh, um, like I said, under this area, I have over two inches. But when you go to the outside, you don't realize this. The hole really does come up. It kind of drops off once the, ca the, the cabin interior part drops down. So... That's a lesson learned. Don't drill holes through your boat and sink it. So, that is definitely the one that went through. I just had a wire pushed up in here. I should have taken a picture before I pushed it through. It came right through the hole, right through here. And I said, I can't, I can't even get my, I can't even get my finger up to where the hole is. That's how tight the cabin liner is to the hole. Where on this side... I have my finger underneath that screw, and there's still, I could fit my whole finger underneath the screw where I cut it off. Even the ones in the back here are still, I can get my nail underneath those cut off screws. So there's still like that much from my nail, the finger, between where the screws are and the hole. So... I didn't realize it was that much tighter right here, so the pan's a little cocked down on this side. So I used a piece of sandpaper on the font on the paint scraper, kind of shoved that in there like so to roughen up the top in the hull, in the bottom of the cabin liner, and I'm going to wet me up some cloth, fiberglass cloth with West System epoxy, and I'm going to get a stick, and we're going to pack it in there, and then after I'm going to let that harden up for a little bit, and then I'll do the patch. I figured I got it all sanded. It's dry out. We're going to get it done today. This way it can dry overnight tomorrow. I can hit with bond paint and put the tank back in and get everything hooked back up. Okay, I'm in there doing the repair. It's Tuesday. Uh, actually, you can kind of see the line here, how far when I added layers of glass. This is not as heavy as what went here, but I came up to right here. You can see that line all the way going up. But there's the little screw hole. It is just a small thing. Hopefully you can hear because I have Sunday Jim. 
playing pretty loud up there in the bone. <laughs> so we're going to sand this out. I sanded it inside already. And uh, just gonna, I'm just going to pack glass in there uh, between the uh, cabin liner and the hull from the inside to fill that hole there. And then out here I'm going to sand this out. I'll ground it in a little bit. And we're just going to lay up glass. Probably actually going to be a little bump there, but I don't really care. As long as it's watertight, that's all that really matters. Because, um, you know, I kind of fared the, the keel when I did the work, but I wasn't that crazy about it. Uh, it's a Skipper 20. It's not a J-boat. So, um, she's only going to do five knots no matter what. So, but, so here we go. Repair work starting at the sander. I'm actually going to try a grinding wheel, a uh, wire wheel, and see if that gets off the paint. Because... So there's a hole. I ground a little bit right where the hole is. I took some gel coat off. So I'll probably hit that first with a little thicken epoxy. And then uh, I'll start glassing up the layers. Said so there's probably going to be a little bit of bulge there. I'm not going to worry about fairing it too much. It's not going to slow her down that much. I'd rather have it patch really well. I think most of the, the patch inside is going to do most of the work anyway because it's really tight between the hull and the liner. So I'll take some shots as I'm patching it up later. Well, okay, again, a little dark, so how good the picture is going to come out. So I've wetted fiberglass and uh, <coughs> shoved that between the cabin uh, inserts and the bottom of the hole, and then, and I did have epoxy ooze out of the little dinky hole, screw hole, so then I came in and put a small patch on here, and then I went to have my dinner, so now it's a little bit hard and tacky, which is good, because I don't want it to move while I'm adding the other layers, so when I have, I've got three of that size, three of this size, and three big ones over there. So that's what I'm going to layer up now, but before I do that, I'm going to mix up some, I got some of my uh, thickener, and gosh, I totally escaped me what I use, I like powdery stuff, I can't think of what it's called, so I'm going to thicken that up, and because this is a little bit of a depression, and I want to kind of, I'm just going to fair that out, fill that up before I put the layers of glass on, so. Um, start laying it up. There's a patch for, for a little screw hole. I'll uh, let that harden and sand it down. And maybe I'll go back over it a little bit more epoxy tomorrow after I sand it. And we'll let it dry. I'll touch up the bottom paint. We should be done. Boom. Just like that. I lost a lot of season this year upgrading my boat, messing it up. So I won't make that mistake again, I'll tell you that much. 